Do you open the meeting first? I never remember. Um, yeah, we can, we can open the planning, uh, the select board meeting. Yeah. Uh, Let Tim do it or whoever's there. Trevor. Okay. <laughs> oh, Trevor. Okay. Well, um, we'll open the select board meeting of, um, see September 12th, 2023 at 6 32 PM. We're meeting hybrid tonight. Oh, okay. We That's are. it. Okay. I mean, well, I'm in a building. I'm at town hall. So okay. are we just meeting no, Zoom? It's really Zoom. Oh, it is. Okay. So yeah. we're meeting Zoom tonight. Yes, <laughs> it's Zoom. All right. And okay. Denise, you want to open the CCI meeting then? Yeah. Opening the CCI meeting. At? At 6.32 or 3, September 12th, 2023. I'll let Lily read. Okay. Um, certain meetings normally held at municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access, and we are required public participation provided in accordance with House Bill Number 58 in the 193rd General Court, which extended the governor's March 12, 2020, order suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, Mass General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 20, until March 31st, 2025. And our meetings can be viewed for your viewing pleasure on the town website. All right. Thank you, Lily. I think you slipped a little. You're not as fast as usual. You know, joking, joking. More relaxed. <laughs> yeah, I'm too, I'm too mellow. <laughs> too mellow. Okay, great. All right. So meeting guidelines, please speak one at a time, follow Deerfield Code of Conduct, be respectful, considerate, courteous, concise, non-repetitive. Raise your hand when you want to be recognized. And I'll do roll call. Uh, James Cambius, Jim, not here yet. Julie Chalfont? Here. Here. Uh, Lily Dwight? Here. Tim Hilchi? Here. Kate Wallace? I saw her. Oh, there you are. Hi, Kate. Here. Andrew Lipson? Here. Here. <laughs> okay. I'm here. Trevor McDaniel? Here. Here. Annie Curtis? No. And Carolyn Ness is here online. Yes. Okay. And we have MA here. Yay. And no Anna Lee. And I, on that note, I will thank Anna Lee for all the time she spent on CCI. She did resign from the planning board and other boards to spend more time with her family in Vermont. And she's got a lot to do. <laughs> so I do thank her for all that she's done. Um, and, you know, hopefully at some point she'll come back and, uh, you know, hang out with us on CCI. All right. Let's see. Um, next thing, approve the minutes from May 25th and June 29th. I know it's been a while. Oh, hi. Hi, Jim. Jim is here. So do, has any everyone had a chance to read the minutes or any additions, <laughs> corrections? Do you remember what they were? It's been a couple of months. You can Thank click you. the you can click the link right in the agenda and they'll pop right up if you want the the brain right. reminder. Yeah. Nope. Do I hear a motion or anything? Make a motion to approve the minutes. Uh, which, which ones? Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, May 25th, June 29th. May 25th. May 25th, Should do them one at a time. Yeah. I'll second that. All right. All in favor? If any, anybody opposed? No one opposed. Okay. We'll move on. How about the minutes of June 29th? Make a motion to approve the minutes of June 29th, 2023. I second. Okay. Oh, wait, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anyone opposed? I have to abstain. Okay. All right. Thank you. And I did forget, we do have a guest this evening, Pam Predmore. She's on the Senior Housing Committee. So, hi, Pam. Good to see you. All right. So, I guess we'll move on and let's see. Move on with reports. So 
I'll start at the bottom this time. M.A. Hey, Denise, I'm sorry, but oh. your agenda has discussed the June 29th VHB presentation. Oh, before. yeah, sorry. Or How did I do that? Oh, I guess I didn't even put reports on it. Does that make a difference? Can we move oh, that? You do, you do have reports on there. Yeah, it's at 640, yep. ju discussed June 29th VHB, and then it says VHB again, but and then committee updates. Okay. Yeah, I do have that. Well, does it, is anyone opposed to doing the committee updates first? No. Okay. All right. Then let's do that. But thanks, like, thanks for pointing that out, Lily. So, MA, anything to report? Uh, yeah. Energy Committee has been working um, with Eversource this, this summer. Uh, I haven't heard the results, but we um, signed up energy audits for the DPW building. Uh, and these are high, these are with an engineering firm, not just the, you know, mass save, here are some light bulbs. Um, and for the DPW building for the elementary school and for Frontier. Now, I'm not absolutely positive anything happened uh, because I haven't had been reported in, but supposedly they've all happened. Don't know the results, but what we would like to do is use them as a roadmap for green communities grants and other things in in the future. That's very cool. Yeah, so that great. is one thing that we're doing. Um, I have been attending the uh, Western Mass Solar Forums. Uh, I know Tim and and Denise attended it, the first one. I don't know whether Tim, were you there today? No, I had a coffee Wait, maker. Missed a four-hour Zoom. What's wrong, Tim? <clears throat> My coffee maker broke, and I had to <laughs> deal with it. <laughs> Priorities. That's an emergency, Tim. <laughs> it is. <laughs> um, anyhow, I I did attend today's. It was very interesting, and I attended the first one. Um, and, and they're really, really good. They've got federal people there. They've got state people there. They've got. And they're just talking about Western solar development in Western Mass. So this one was on land use and zoning. Uh, I expect that they can be found on their on the uh, website at C at the Clean Energy Extension. Um, yeah. Probably even individual ones, so you don't have to listen to the whole four hours. Um, but it, two interesting things from that today. Scott Jackson, who was the moderator, also did a presentation, um, but more interest about zoning and about permitting, mainly about permitting, actually. And he is on the Waitley Concom. And um, and so just, you know, that that was an interesting bit. If we need to contact him, he's definitely available. He's on the UMass uh, CEE staff. So. Um, and then Carrie Judge is from DOER. And DOER has put together, they talked a little bit about this in the first session, but the DOER has put together something called a story map. And that and and it has taken every single piece of property in the entire state and ranked it for solar development on a whole bunch of different criteria. So you can sign up, you can go go into that website and and look at Deerfield and say, oh, look, here's a piece of property that is is excellent for development, excellent for, you know, I mean, for solar development, whether it's ground mound or rooftop or and they're looking at um, a whole variety of criteria on that. I won't go into any more detail, but. I think it's a really, it's not a perfect instrument, obviously. They were, you know, using data that they weren't in Deerfield looking at each piece of property. They were doing it through other means. So it's not perfect by any means, but um, it can help direct us as we look at future zo solar zoning and other kinds of things that we do as a way of sort of directing development towards the 
the most optimal pieces. And and the other message on this in, at this particular one, because they were talking a lot about land use, was staying away from forest um, and agricultural, unless it's agrosolar, um, and and um, and and really putting it on you know, developed land, developed land. And that was the big message that they gave. And then the big question at the end was, you know, how are you going to make this affordable? And that question didn't get answered. But um, they're very aware of it. Okay. G uh, Jim, do you have, have your hand up? Just, yes. Just out of curiosity, what is, um, what is solar power generation zoned as in Deerfield? Uh, there are there are three there, it's some of it's by right and some of it is um, site plan review but okay. all of it is I mean we have a solar districts and so it's okay. it's there's various places where you can put different size solar there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of zoning language in it. <laughs> But I, yeah. I was thinking specifically about like a dedicated solar field. Would that be a um, industry, like, you know, the one over. Um, well, I, I you, you can look at our solar bylaws, chapter 179. It's a lot of really fun reading. Um, in the meantime, <laughs> in the meantime, we are putting solar on the, um, on the transfer station on the landfill. That'll be coming. But, you know, that's I'm sure someone else would be reporting on that. I was just wondering how it would interact with things like the farmland protection stuff. And I mean, you said that they prefer not to do it in agricultural. I was just wondering if that could was or could be done by zoning. If there's AP, it, it, it doesn't at this point in time. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I I think APR does not allow for solar development. Okay, thank you. All right, All right, Andrea. Um, what I'm thinking is that, you know, you could put solar on top of barns, et cetera. Um, yeah. and, but not, we're not encouraging that land be used that would otherwise be used for agriculture, uh, used for solar. Yeah. And any kind of rooftop is by right. So the others gets a little more complicated on a case by case basis. Okay. Thanks, MA. Any, anything uh, else? There's a couple of other things. Um, we have received a draft solar action plan from the UMass um, team that we, we work with as the students at um, the, the Clean Energy Extension. That draft uh, is I, is it on the is it on the CCI website? If I didn't put it there, might it be there? Probably not, huh? No. Um, so you mean the CCI website or the town? It page? is on the it is yeah. on the town website on the and the energy committee. Uh, well, if you get it to me, I can put it on the CCI website. If people want it there. It can be both places, but we it's it's an extensive report and um in draft form right now. And the energy committee, uh, there's. We need to look at it, prioritize it, decide which things we want to do in town and which we don't, and probably as some sort of subcommittee to do that and then present it to the select board and other boards to approve. And it definitely has a lot of zoning stuff in it. It's got it's 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 a really good report with lots and lots of information. Um, and but. Uh, for both because the energy committee, you know, it would be like three or four people going over it and make and, and prioritizing and things. I think it would be a lot better if it was a bigger group or a more diverse group. And so we are looking for volunteers to help us with prioritizing uh, those recommendations and um, putting okay. together a plan. Any hands going up? Gee, questions? Not so questions, you mean? I'm sorry. Yeah, are you taking questions? I I am, but I'm also looking for volunteers. Oh, 
<laughs> tapped out. Oh, Trevor, I thought you were volunteering. Okay, Trevor, do you have a question? I just real quickly on uh, for, I uh, wondered if the KC's been in touch with you about the aggregation, uh, municipal aggregation. There was a meeting last week. I just want to make sure she was touching base with the energy committee to make sure you guys were in. Uh, not with me. Okay. Um, the energy committee should get involved with that because they're looking, DPU is making significant changes to that, which will be detrimental to our aggregation program. So I know you guys worked hard on that. So it's probably a good idea okay, to. Okay, I will get in touch back with you. Just wanted to leave that little bit of info. Okay. Yeah, Thanks. and, and may Casey's away this week, so she'll be yeah. back on Monday. Okay. Tim? Yeah, so um, MA, if you and David want to put our heads together, um, the idea is to try and um, give some public comment to the DPU that politely says butt out. Yeah. Um, of, I'm happy to. Uh, you know, say don't do anything that's going to harm the benefits of aggregation. Um, you know, they're trying to stick their snout in and. Um, we had a better DPU now. Yeah. I don't okay. know. Lily? So, MA, after October 11th, contact me and I may volunteer. Very, I, I might. I have more availability after that. October 11th. Okay. Yeah. That, that'd be great. It's, it's only 29 days. Okay. Woohoo. Okay. Anything else, MA? Or are you all set? Uh, let me check my list, 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 list. Um, no, I think that, that's it. Okay, great. Thank you. Some good information. Definitely. All right. Next, I'm going to ask Carolyn, do you have anything to report that you can? Um, we received a, a MVP grant for our review of the MVP program. So it's uh, MVP 2.0. We'll be one of the first in the state to get that done. Um, the new update. Uh, we have uh, money for um, the Leary lot, green infrastructure in the Leary lot, and we have money for the entryway to the Deerfield Elementary School, green infrastructure there, and we hopefully will have enough money to do the permitting and um, tree box swale that will filtrate water coming off uh, Main Street in Old Deerfield. That's great. We, are, we were supposed to meet tomorrow, but um, it's been postponed. Uh, we haven't rescheduled, so it will be pretty soon. What else am I supposed to report, Denise? I can't even remember. I don't know. <laughs> uh, capital improvement. We'll be meeting uh, probably just to go over the police HVAC system for the special town meeting. And um, from a flooding point of view, I had two meetings today. And unfortunately, there's no hazardous mitigation money in the pot for us to apply for a hazardous mitigation grant um, until there's a, you know, a natural disaster. But by the time we're ready for more, grant, you know, we'll keep going for grants, so that, you know, is okay. But the brick grant is moving forward for the Pine Nook, and um, as far as I know, the 604B and the 319 are uh, still moving forward as well. Great. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions other than what this, the three, I don't know what the numbers represent Carolyn. <laughs> that might be helpful to know. Oh well I just want to say Lemonster and Fitchburg had terrible, terrible flooding. Um, the MEMA our MEMA representative was there this afternoon at the REPC meeting. And um, so another group of communities that will be able to hopefully work with us to get money for the legislature. Um, so we're hustling that. I'm gonna call them uh, Thursday, not not tomorrow. See if they have any uh, initial estimates of their losses, and then just talk to Noah, uh, Joe, and Natalie again. Yeah, 
No, it, lo it looked pretty nasty. I saw some of that online. It was awful. Yeah, but, no, it was really, yeah, yeah, it was unbelievable. Yeah, pretty bad. Okay, great. Thank you. If Anything else? Are you all set? Guess you're all set. Okay. Mm. I'm going to move on to Andrea. Uh, sure. The Open Space Committee met on August 22nd. We have been doing research on five town-owned parcels. I think I mentioned this the last time. We have determined that um, we need to do something to actually permanently um, restrict development on them. They are in a very funny, we've done the research that we can't tell what the intentions were of the people who sold the land to the town or gave the land to the town. The, some, the earliest piece of property was given almost a hundred years ago, the latest one 50 years ago. So um, it's, you know, things weren't done in a, in a way that would be helpful for um, easily just saying, okay, now, now we're going to put a, a permanent restriction on it. So we have been, uh, we talked to, um, Pete Law from the CONSCOM, and they don't have the capacity to um, take care of a, a conservation restriction, that be, partly because they don't have bylaws that stipulate that they can do that. So we have, um, the Open Space Committee has, I think that um, the chair has now sent something forward to the select board saying, okay, we'd like to talk to you about how to, um, how we should go about currently uh, protecting this land. And we've been in discussions with the Franklin Land Trust. So they know how to do that. Um, so uh, that, that's where we are. These five pieces of land um, are um, of great recreational uh, and open space value. The ones, there are four of them on Kumtuk and they have all kinds of wonderful reasons why they should be permanently protected. Um, Lily, do you wanna ask me something? Yeah, so are these the parcels that uh, we identified that are like adjacent to Eagle Brook and, and stuff like that up on the on the ridge that could possibly be used for uh, carbon offset credit for the town? Very possibly. We have not, I think we were sort of hoping MA might um, have any, some information about that. It's, there. there are, Two, two forests, um, the Pine Nook Forest, which is on off Pine Nook Road. So yes, the Steam Mill Road Forest, right down the street from me. Um, the Birchwood Nature Refuge, which is over um, by Stage Road and, uh, and Kumtuk Road. And those are the four that are that go across, that are it somehow uh, touch the uh, Kumtuk. The last piece is on the, on the river, on the um, Deerfield River. It's that cute little place where the fisher fisher folk go in, uh, go into the water. So um, they're all of high recreational value, et cetera. So, um, and I, and I, I would say that um, that the the land that is right uh, where the bridge is to go over to Greenfield. If you're going north, it's down on the left. The town of Deerfield gave that to the DCR. Uh, yeah. Yes, it, but yes. So again, I, I think I t said this, um, you know, quite a while ago. We are concentrating on the Kumtuk Ridge, okay. because uh, because of its high value, because the town owns so much of the land, because there's a whole trail system that there's a whole informal trail system up there that people are using, and abusing and so it would be really you know we really need to step in and um that's just such a high value in town we understand there's other properties there's lots of other places that need um help but you i mean we've been talking about this for i don't know six months now and this is as far as we've gotten with five little piece parcels of land it's just it's a daunting project and um we're starting there great okay Thanks, Andrea. Thanks for doing that. I think that's really important. And Lily, I think the property that you're talking about is, even though we own that, I think that was 
a gentleman from Greenfield wanted to connect the bike path <clears throat> through that property, but that sort of fell short because I don't think Greenfield wanted to support it. Big surprise. So, so. I, I actually think that the piece of property you're talking may be on the other side of the street. The, there's a piece oh, of okay. that is right by the, the Sheepside Bridge that I think mm -hmm. is owned by DCR. I know that people, um, Alan Sweetland told us about, you know, trying to kayak there and having to go through poison ivy. And, and so we know that there are ways of getting DCR to help. But again, it's not on Pecomtuck. And so we haven't focused on it yet. We know, we're we aware that it's there and needs to be preserved as well. But yeah. All right. Well, one thing at a time. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Can't do everything at once. I'm sorry to interrupt, but DCR was supposed to put a handicap accessible boat ramp there, and they never did. So I think it's something that we could push for river, you know, river access and boat ramp for handicap accessible kinds of things. Uh, agreed. So again, the um, open space committee decided that it was going to focus on walking and hiking because that's what people said they wanted in town. We know very yeah. well that the next thing will be rivers and water access. No question. Yeah. So you can just put that on the uh, future to do list. <laughs> yeah. Great. Lily. Okay. Lily. So I, I just say again, after October 11th, I'll have a lot more freedom, but I think we really, um, it would be just awesome to get carbon offsets for all those forests that you're that you are focused on and it, so that if they could then potentially generate the income to help maintain them that would be really sweet and so after october 11th i will bird dog this because i do think i mean it may not pan out but we really it's worth looking into and so i'll um i'll talk to you in ma okay okay, okay that's great um, the other thing oh. to note is, I'm, I'm sorry, it's just going to add one other thing. Um, Franklin Land Trust, again, knows how to do these things. We understand that there will be costs involved. We have not approached uh, the CPC for monies for this. So that's a possible um, source of funds for some things. And when um, someone is granted the um, conservation restriction, they need to do things. They need to check the land. They need to, you know, so there are responsibilities, which is why it'd be a really good thing to see if we could get the um, Franklin Land Trust to do that because that's they're in the business of doing that. They already know how to do it. They're already doing those. So, um, but because the town owns the land and you know, we, we're trying to figure out how we get um, the uh, the CR accepted. Um, so, okay. I'm sorry, Tim. You want to ask? Yes. Oh yeah, I just wanted to. Since Lily brought it up a couple of times, I wanted to mention that um, I read an interesting article, scientific article, um, might have been in the Times, about how a lot of forest land that used to be considered carbon sinks is no longer like. Canada's vast arboreal forests are now net carbon dioxide generators and that these um, aggregation benefits are drying up because nobody is seeing any benefit from them. So if we're going to make any money, we better do it soon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Emma, did you have a question? No, I just think I've dropped that ball, Lily, and I'll talk to you. Okay. Thank you, both. Right. So we're going to move on to Kate Lawless. Hi, everyone. Um, I don't have much to update you on, but um, we do have a meeting on the books. The Town Common Committee um, is meeting on the 19th of September. Oh, my God. My dog is going crazy. Um, so, yeah, we haven't met in almost like since November and we've been waiting on some uh, town stuff, some state stuff. And it's just, we're trying to be patient and we're going to meet again and see what we can do in the meantime. So I don't know, Trevor, if you want to add to that at all. But. No, we're, we're what losing was the patience. Date? What was the date on that? <laughs> the 19th. Um, yep. September 19th. All right. 
Well, Kate, thanks for, thanks for hanging in on that. I know it's been a long haul. I do have questions for that, and it's the same question I've been asking for a long time, and you probably may not know the answers, but someone's got to keep bugging them. DOT, when are they going to camera the road? Got to put some pressure on them. Yeah. How do we right. put pressure on them? Keep asking. Well, we need to have someone push them a little harder. So right. I know jo Joe and Natalie were at that meeting that we went to how many months ago. So maybe it's time to reconnect and say, hey, you know what? Come on. Yeah. I and I, I know they gave us sidewalks. They threw us yeah. a few crumbs. That yeah. was great. Yeah. But but that's not enough. So I don't know. I know. I'm just I'm telling you what you already know. But <laughs> yeah, anyway. I think hopefully at this meeting, we'll get some more. We'll get a little fired yeah. up and, and get moving again. Good. All right. <laughs> and then I remember, you know, I don't know if we're going to talk about the Leary lot at all, but there's mm -hmm. a possibility of kind of combining those two projects. So I'll let yeah. Trevor speak to that when that's time. Okay. Well, as a matter of fact, Trevor, why don't you? All right. <laughs> so ahead. we would, we'd love to, you know, uh, just speaking with Kate, we, we've just been so frustrated that we can't get anything done because of the state and, um, we just thought maybe we would pare back a little bit on what we were going to do there and really just get something done uh, because the, the walkways are just so horrible and the benches are bad and maybe we could just get started and if we've got to expand it down the road we could do that but then you know we thought with the leary lot work going on we want to tie it all together It'd be great to use the same materials same contractor i mean we have the funding we have the funding for the leary lot why not try and group group everything together that we can and just get get moving on it? Um, and if we've got a we've got a you know pair back on something, we'll do that. I don't know. We we have to do something. Everyone's just frustrated that we can't actually get anything done, and we're just going to have to just commit and do what we want to do, and then move on from there and ask for forgiveness or deal with it later. But we can't go eight years without doing anything. So especially when it's been funded forever already. So. Um, so anyway, so we'll, yeah, we'll meet again. Um, and I've, I've been asking, um, would like to ask the town common committee to come to the, you know, to the Leary lot meeting and just, you know, there's great energy there. A lot of good people want to work. And if we can all kind of help each other and just get some things going in town, I think it'd, it'd be, uh, be great to just get some, uh, some movement going. Really? I, I guess I should have asked this, uh, but Trevor sparked it in my brain. Um, <clears throat> now I'm putting on my CPC hat for a second. How mm -hmm. long ago were the funds for the town common approved and yeah. do they need to be renewed? They, the may, they may need to be renewed. I think it was two years ago. It was Maybe. 2021. Yeah. 2021. Yeah. So it's okay. getting close, right? You need to do it in what two or three years, or? Kim, do you remember? Is it three years? Ah, uh, it's muted. He's Jim. muted. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I was muted. <laughs> yeah, it's three years, and you can get an extension. So okay, it might be good you. just to get an extension. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we should do should do that. Yeah, uh, put I don't that on your can... agenda. Yeah, we might be able to good still add it, add it to the meeting. Um, yeah town meeting coming up to just extend that um make a note to talk to casey okay so uh sewer work um we're getting really close you know for completing that project um it's been exciting to see stuff come together phase one is, is pretty much done uh phase two they're working on which are the aeration tanks and raising the walls of the the original circular clarifier um the new clarifier is online and working the headworks is online we're dealing with um some something some issue with the grit tank and the grit removal so that that's being worked out through the vendor um but a lot of the a lot of the work is getting done there and most of it will probably be done by you know hard winter and then they'll come back in the spring and you know uh top pave and landscape and all of that but we're getting really close to getting done with that we have um some change orders coming through because we're getting into the grant phase so we're trying to use as much much money up as we can um, on the grant stuff um, to get to get all the money we can get out of that because you had to first use our money then the borrowing money and now we're into the grant 
uh, we're, we're closing on the loan at the end of the month and um, for the second loan. So we closed the first loan already, the second loan for 1.375 interest rate uh, is, uh, is going to close at the end of the month. We've been working hard getting all the paperwork signed and uh, lawyer stuff done and um, bond council stuff done. So that uh, Brenda will be back tomorrow. Case would be back at the end of the week. I think we're hoping to close at the end of the month on that. Um, I'll take a question, Tim. You've got one on that before I move on? Oh, you know, I was just going to say one thing. Could you briefly talk about, without being specific, uh, mm -hmm. that the landowner next to us might? Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah, there was an issue with some uh, kind of understanding where the lines were in the trees. Uh, so there, there were some trees that had to come down because of the building going in and then falling on the building. And I think we have some work to do with the neighbor of just finishing up like we wanted to build a, a berm and protect it and plant some trees and, and all that. So we're working with the homeowner trying to kind of nail down what's needed there. And um, we may have to eat a little bit of crow on a couple of, <laughs> a couple of trees, but they're kind of scrabby pines. But we, we you know, we want to replace them or uh, we have a fence going up, but we wanted to really kind of beautify that area to pr protect the neighbor from the view of it um, and, and just create habitat there. So I, we're working with, with our attorneys to kind of make sure that that gets done. Uh, I think there was a discrepancy between the old uh, tie and bond um, or a Weston Sampton plan and the kind of the current plan. So there's, you know, sight lines, you always get issues and trees on the line. So we're, we're dealing with that with the owner. Um, Lisa's taking care of that for us. Um, and then, um, so I also sit on Frontier Capital. We have a meeting coming up uh, Wednesday as well. So I'm gonna go to that and then You're come muted. over for the Leary Lot meeting. Um, that is uh, really getting an update. We can't hear you now, Trevor. Trevor's frozen. Oh, why? Now you're back. Because I live in, right in downtown and I still can't even get a signal. Um, so if He disappeared. He sure did. Hmm. That's but he was just talking about Frontier Capital, right? Is is that the Capital Committee or something? Here he is. Oh, he's back. Uh, sorry, everybody. I don't know why it just crashed out here. Um, but can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So uh, I don't know if you heard. I'm on the fine, uh, Frontier Capital meeting, uh, Capital uh, Committee. So we have a meeting coming up on Wednesday. I'm going to go to that and then come back to the Leary Lot um, meeting. I think it's Wednesday, Thursday. Can't remember. Coming up here this week uh, to get an update on the on the tennis courts, which are well underway, and um, an update on the other things that we've been doing. And we uh, have to really tackle the roof uh, over there. So we have, you know, that was one of the big projects that we funded and. Uh, you know, it's it's for the cost is four times what we funded for the roof. So we really have to de decide they have a new process of maybe laying down uh, a membrane kind of thing, uh, maybe a liquid membrane. So we were going to hear about that and kind of decide which areas we want to do. Um, you know, you have to think like, do you want to do a roof on a building that you might change in the next 15 years or 10 years? Uh, so, you know, so there's going to be some thought around how much we can tackle there. Uh, with the funds we have and what makes the most sense. So, um, and then the uh, Deerfield Elementary School is down a um, member. So we're, uh, I've been trying all year to find somebody to take that space. Um, we really need, you know, to have a full member at the Deerfield Elementary School. So I was going to sit in for a meeting or ask to maybe get appointed short term until we find somebody, but I'm still pushing hard. I'm hoping to meet with uh, Tina this week and see if there's any parents coming through of, you know, kindergarten, preschool, anybody that wants to, you know, young parents that are wanting to get involved with their kids education. So kind of how I got there and hopefully others, you know, have all done that, done the same kind of work. So hopefully we can find somebody to, um, to sit on that, that board. I know that Darius is talking a bit about and maybe has reached out to Julie on the uh, playground. So there's some of that we kind of did partial. Um, you know, we knew there was going to be another phase at some point, but I guess some of the work is, you know, it's war and tour over the last, you know, four or five years or so. And I think there's some of the, the uh, foam 
needs to be redone and it does need to be a little bit more handicap accessible. We kind of did it all volunteer work and I think we need to do a little bit. I think uh, Darius is looking for some some a grant and some other help to to uh, one make an ADA accessible. We have I think three students in wheelchairs right now at the school, so we're looking at ways to make sure that they're involved in in recess and uh, there, there's a, a mechanism that the kids can get on in the chair and strap in and then you know it's kind of a boat swinging boat thing that all the other kids can pile on too. So he was looking at something like that and then also. Um, we did some quick fresher up at the preschool playground and he's looking to kind of do something a little bit more substantial in, in those areas. So it's early, but uh, we just wanted to kind of talk about that. And he was, I think, going to reach out to Julie to get some advice on what we did before. So. Okay. I think that's all I got. Great. Thanks, Trevor. I just wanted to go back just for a minute to the, um, to the town common, you know, I'm just wondering, I don't want to, belabor the point but you sure. know you said well you know do something and you know maybe pay for it later and i'm just wondering do you guys have like a plan a b and c and well, plan, you know plan c is just to do the minimum amount now with benches and stuff plan yeah. b would be to do your original plan plan a whatever however you want to do it would mm -hmm. be to incorporate which many people have suggested park street if we ever get that so my concern is that not thinking about what you really want to do and mm -hmm. then being able to scale it back down to what you can do and yeah. if we do get additional money can we do that so we right. don't have to duplicate time and energy it's exactly what we've been thinking that's why we've been okay. so hamstrung for so long because we were like okay well where where can we stop and what permits do we need and then when when we right. had to get involved they were like oh you need to expand this out and these sidewalks yeah. are too long and crosswalks are too long and it just it, it gets overwhelming and you get paralyzed right. you're like and you don't want to waste money but that's why we were thinking like you're right a b and c what could we do immediately right. that would be you know good improvements but not really like if we expanded duplicate a ton of work so yeah yeah, we're going to try and tackle all that and f figure out okay. what we can do. Great. Thank you. Yeah, we'd love any right. advice. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. I'm going to move on to... I have my hand up. Oh, I'm sorry, Lily. I didn't um, see. So the, I'm trying to take notes here. And Leary Lott was just like quickly passed over because it was because Trevor talked about it melding with town common but didn't you want to say that there's a public meeting tomorrow night and oh yeah statuses and things like that what's going on there i wasn't sure if that was going to be under tim's uh thing or not or oh, okay yeah, yeah i don't know okay I, i'm happy to talk about it but yes there there is a public hearing but i don't know do you want to touch on it tim or oh sure we can keep moving along sure thank you okay all right okay so Who's going to touch on it? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Tim will. Okay, Tim, why don't you go then? Oh, okay. Um, so there's a meeting about the Leary lot tomorrow night. Wow. <laughs> what time, Tim? o'clock in person <laughs> um, at Town Hall. And um, there are people, um, basically, uh, in theory, the final concept plan will be presented and there will be more public discussion. Um, we're moving ahead on um, <clears throat> EV charging stations um, and grants, both state and federal and Eversource and um, for another installation of um, EV chargers, both level two and level three. Level three is the federal grant and those decisions will be made in the fall about whether we get them. Um, <clears throat> there has been some change in the, uh, thanks, I'm not sure if it was the Energy Committee or um, we got renegotiated, uh, you know, the type of contract that we had with the EV stations that exist near the Cheslick's market. Uh, the demand charges were dropped. And this, I think, is part of an effort across the state that, uh, they're changing the rules about that. So it makes the uh, energy much more affordable. I've asked Chris Nolan to try and give us an update about whether the town currently has any cost for having those um, chargers in place. 
there's been some social media back and forth about, yeah. you know, well, who knows why people are interested in these things, but they apparently are, um, you know, because they either are for EV charger EVs and, or they're against them. Uh, uh, so anyway, um, hopefully he'll have some answers about whether the town has any cost involved in having them in town. Um, <clears throat> and we're hopeful that we can break ground this year um, on the Leary lot. We have Berkshire Brewing Company and um, Hamshaw Lumber who have a vested interest in what happens there. There's still some discussion about whether traffic should come in and go out on North Main Street. I don't really see how traffic can go out on North Main Street, but other people have different ideas. And, um, oh, I wanted to do a mini poll. Um, how many people think it would just really create traffic mayhem to have cars going in and out of North Main Street from a 55 parking space public lot? My thought, just as I would say this, would be um, the only way I'd be good with people going out of there is if they could only take a right-hand turn, period. But I'd, I'd rather them exit out onto Elm. Yeah. Um, well, apparently the police think it's an okay thing, but um, I want to have more discussion about that tomorrow night. Um, mm -hmm. So, and then also whether we can have a two-way or just a one-way Elm Street, and, and if it's one way and we don't want to go e exit on North Main, then we're going to have an exit on um, Elm. Um, yep. If you have an entrance and an exit on Elm, then people who are coming from uh, Greenfield Road can just get into the parking lot rather than going all the way through Center Town, coming around and approaching from North Main. Um, so anyone coming from south on Greenfield Road would have a much larger, a more logical e entrance to that place. Uh, Jim, you have your hand up? Yes. Um, would it make any difference in the amount of available parking in the lot for it to be a one-way flow versus two-way? I don't think it would affect it. Um, but um, I don't think the plan currently calls for if you only have flow going one way, then we can put more spaces in there. Yeah. Um, we're trying to balance the, the green aspect of not having a big black heat sink in the middle behind Elm Street. So currently, I mean, we could, I think one of the parking, one of the drafts was 78 spaces and we've sort of pulled back more green spaces, more swales, um, yep. and 55 being the number that we're currently working with, I believe, um, or possibly 57. Um, and then I believe it's four level three EV chargers and four level two EV chargers in addition to the ones that are already near Cheslix. And then we're also working with the residents to try and um, address their concerns, the, the, particularly the apartment owners, even though they have their own parking. Um, so um, <clears throat> so hopefully we'll get a really good jumping off point tomorrow night um, so that we can actually start thinking about RFPs and stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. um, if I don't know whether it's relevant or not, but um, when the EV charger we already have, uh, there is an annual uh, software charge. Um, and there might have been another one, but I know that there was an annual software charge, and that's the one that the Greenfield Bank um, agreed to give us a grant for. Okay, and is that a re recurring grant? Good question. It it was it it was a little vague, I think, but Lori, Lori Bouchada is the one who knows those answers. Okay, and Jim, did you have a follow up? Well, a little bit. Um, so currently, this will not permit overnight parking, correct? 
because that's my understanding. Time, right. So would there be like a cutoff time or because I was thinking you might get the apartment residents on side if like they can have guests park in the lot, you know? Yeah, we're we're trying to figure out how do you deal with the the apartment residents. Um, of course, I believe all of them have spaces currently, although some people apparently have been using parts of the land to park on. Um, so, you know, what people have been used to doing versus what they will be able to do once it's developed is an issue that we have to work our way through. Um, and I believe the police and the highway department really don't want overnight parking, particularly in winter, because mm -hmm. they have to keep the lot clear. Um, so those are issues that remain unresolved as well. Uh, Kate? Um, I think Trevor mentioned, or and I've been in and out because of my connectivity issues, so mm -hmm. I feel very sad to have missed all this discussion, but um, there's a meeting coming up about the Leary lot. And can you repeat yes. when that is? Tomorrow night at six oh, o'clock in town hall, in person. Wow. Uh, I don't okay. see it on the website. Am I missing it? No, it's sure. there under the select board meeting. Oh, it's the select board. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't I say thought, anything about it. I thought you all were going into executive session when I looked at that. Fine. Well, that's at 5 p.m. Oh, oh, okay. I didn't look at the time. We're okay. multitasking. <laughs> Okay, so, thank you. All right. And then the other thing is that um, I've been working with um, various people in the town offices um, to look at the fellowship hall portion of this 1821 building to see what, if anything, it can be used for in the library project. Um, we're having an engineer look at the structural. He, he looked, we were in the basement today looking at it. It's very well supported, but we're gonna get a, a load calculation performed so that it can either be used um, for storage of the books so that they're close to the library as opposed to storing them 10 or 15 miles away, getting them trucked. Um, and or a new idea came up today, which would be to, because the library project got so much more expensive, um, there is a board in the state called the AAB, and I'm not, I think it's, it's a board that that considers requests for um, a short-term uh, <clears throat> reprieve from the ADA compliance requirements so that, for instance, you could use a portion of the fellowship hall as the library's temporary facility without having to put in a $30,000 ADA compliant bathroom or put in a ramp. You would have to come up with some other, we, you have to develop a plan. So I wanna to talk to the library folks about this, get their input. Um, where you come up with a plan that says, we have a plan to deliver, you know, um, paperback books to folks who would ordinarily access the building by a lift or whatever. Uh, and we're making this request because we're gonna be out of our library for 18 months. Um, and we have a, a five or $6 million unanticipated cost that uh, we're trying to work through. So um, that's that idea came up today. So it's not very well thought out, but it sounds like worth exploring of course, that all relates to whether the library is willing to move into something that's not, you know, um, that's not necessarily as aesthetically pleasing as they'd like it to be. Um, so that's a discussion that we'll have to have. But it, at a minimum, it looks like a lot of the space in the fellowship hall could probably accommodate um, a good portion of, if not all of the library books, if that's all it can be used for as storage. Oh, uh, Jim. Um, so, um, uh, this is kind of a spoiler for, for it, but, um, I do know that on the, in the library director's report, they mentioned talking about using the community room in the congregational church. So obviously they're thinking about that too. Um, right. but, um, 
uh, uh, two other things. Um, I believe our the grant from the um, Board of Library Commissioners has some specifications in it for what the interim facility has to have. Um, right. Yeah. So okay. So you're aware of that. Fine. Yeah, it has. You know, there's a, there's a minimum I don't requirement. Think a bathroom is one of them. What's that? I don't think a bathroom is one of them. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that uh, that you know, if you have one library book and access to CW Mars, you know, that's all you need basically. But it's what you know. The real question is, what does the library want to do, and what are they willing to consider? And the they're other willing to consider anything. They were talking oh, about good. Being a that's good. And then Cumbie's building. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> September eighteen is the date when the RFP for storage and or space is supposed to be finished. And my understanding is that we have one sealed bid at this point. So that's yeah. not very good. <laughs> and it could be for a number of reasons, like there's no space, um, et cetera. And so, yeah, um, trying to come up with creative ideas. Uh, just to save money. I would rather spend the money that we get from the grant on physical development of a thing than on renting space that we might have an alternative if we just right. really thought creatively. And well, I know that the library is looking at that, so I don't mean to suggest otherwise. Yeah. Denise? And Tim, we, we, we discussed that on because Tim, Julie and I are on the library building committee and we did discuss that. Yeah. And they were hoping to get three RFPs, they only have one. And, you know, the, the nice thing about putting it in Fellowship Hall, even if we had to do some upgrades, we would do upgrades that we would continue to use after that. So it's a win-win situation. And the other thing is, like, the library is part of the community. The library is part of the campus. It's not, you're not traveling in their own parallel universe. So, you know, I think, Mostly. yeah, Jim, well, I know, but I think, <laughs> You know, it's nice, you know, to really consider to play well with others and really consider that and what a benefit that would be for the whole town and not just the library. So those yeah. are my thoughts. And so that, that's it. Yeah. Thanks, Tim. No, that's good. A lot of, a lot of work. God. Okay, Lily's Julie. Flag like on the play. Oh, sorry. Lily? I have my hand up because I'm not sure who... Who is managing the 1888 building stuff? Is that Tim? Is it yeah. Julie? Okay, so so um, Tim, Julie, Denise. Okay, because um, I, I thought Tim was still talking, so I didn't know if Tim was going to address it then. I can continue, but but why don't you ask uh, what you were thinking about, and then I can. Well, uh, what I'm thinking about is the special town meeting that um you that the 1888 building project as presented by tim which is why i was picking on him um has a pending application to review where the community preservation committee was presented with three different possibilities yep. and what's so, the if we want to move forward on that because the cpc is meeting some point soon when are they meeting off the top of my head, I can't tell you, but it is this okay. month. It's this okay, month. good because I do. I do think we need to go before them. Um, since my last appearance here, um, I got a phone message from Elizabeth Warren saying essentially, um, "Hi, Tim. This is Senator Elizabeth Warren. Just calling to tell you that you have four million dollars um, and." The caveat being assuming Congress can pass a budget. So she, I thought that was nice because I mean, I got Marky told us this through one of his aides, but she actually called me and I, I saw a number from Washington. I didn't answer it. So I got this nice voice message, which I can play. Um, but uh, she's very positive about the possibility. She says, this is not something Congress is going to fight over. They're going to fight over bathrooms and they're going to fight over, you know, transgender military medical care, uh, but they're not going to fight over this. And um, so as long as they can get a budget 
you know, that's a very positive thing, but we probably won't know in time to bring it to special town meeting. So that's right. why I, I do need to go to CPC uh, and say, look, you know, we'll put this into the next year's project, but I want to, um, Kate. Just to let you know, it's tomorrow night is the, according to the website, if I'm reading it right, September 13th, Community Preservation Committee meeting. At what time? Oh, I'm checking. Yeah. 6.15. Everybody wants to meet tomorrow night. Um, <laughs> A lot of Munichs. So um, I'll guess I'll call Frank and uh, see if I can see if you guys can put together a meeting where we just talk about this. Um, thanks for the reminder. I mean, I knew I had to call Frank, but I didn't know you were meeting tomorrow. Well, neither did I. <laughs> is that is that a, is that on the website? The agenda. Oh, I mean, apparently the it is. It is. A long time ago. I oh, okay. Yeah, I wasn't looking at uh, for tomorrow night. Okay. All right. Okay. Anything else, Tim? And Not answered all the like questions. Another topic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, Julie, what's happening with finance? No, I got nothing. Uh, Brenda, I really don't. We haven't met. Um, Brenda comes back tomorrow, so I'm meeting with her Friday. So we'll be setting up a finance committee meeting um, sometime between now and special town meeting. Great. Um, but we haven't done anything. And does Julie does does TBAC meet at all? The, the building committee. We haven't met either. Okay. Uh, so. If everyone doesn't know, we did get some news from Brenda. They certified 1.5 million or a little more free cash. Wow. For, yeah. Is that right, Julie? Yes. Is that the right number? I I haven't heard it. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's 1.55 or something like that, which was helped because Eagle Brook paid a large. Oh, uh, right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. And we yep. had that discussion about whether to, when to take it in. Yep. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. What, so I'm sorry, what did, what did Eagle Brook pay? The building, um, building they, they paid a fee for the building they're doing up there. The permit, yeah. Permit so, fees. Is it, wasn't it like 250000 something like that? Yeah. Yeah. It was really time. big. I don't remember how much. But... Something to that effect. So. Yeah. Good Are amount of money. A large one from Deerfield Academy for that mass that they're putting on five and ten. Actually, That's a ball field. yeah, they're probably going to be doing something similar. Maybe Brick Trevor might know better when they build when they do the expansion to the dining facility. Mm -hmm. That one would be fairly substantial building permit. Yes. Yeah, there's probably a, a small one for the temporary permit as well. Um, temporary building dining hall as well right okay thank you julie uh let's see lily all right well you heard me talk a lot about cpc evidently we are meeting tomorrow night um <laughs> um and i know one of the things that we're going to do for um cpc is to um establish guidelines around late requests because as some of you know we had requests come in uh, way past deadline last time and um and the concern being that if we did it then that sets up the future people on the committee for having to deal with late deadlines as well. So we're going to work on devising guidelines that basically will say something along the lines of um, if requested by the select board and or, you know, for, you know, various things about it being important to the town. So it's not just going to be, uh, for example, I'm going to pick on space and recreation, Andrea, sorry, like if the beach decided like we need new beach balls and they didn't and they didn't apply until after the deadline that would not merit the obviation of the deadline so we're going to work on that um 
we also, um, this ties into senior housing too. So senior housing finally got, this will all come together, I promise. Um, senior housing finally got the uh, appraisal for the St. James property, which came in at about uh, a little more than 460,000 bucks, which is, um, I'm trying to remember how much we got from the CPC, but I think it's a little higher than, I think we were going for 440, if I remember correctly. So um, we're going to talk to the owner and see if she would accept that and stuff. So if so, we've got to go in front of the um, Capital Improvement Planning Committee and put that request in. We have to get the select board to tell us if they want, because this is, even though it's a senior housing pot and senior housing striving, it's the town, right? It's just another facet of the town. So the select board has to decide if they want to move on purchasing the property. But I think then it will be restricted to being used for senior housing, which is another dimension of the conversation. Or, you know, maybe the town wants to consider just buying it for the town and not having that concern about the CPA funding it or whatever. I don't know. So there's a lot to get figured out around that. And um, I think that I have to go and review the application, but I think that we need to go back to the community preservation committee with the exact amount of money that if, should the town decide to move forward that, um, that we request to be, distributed. So there's a bunch of things tied together there. Um, for senior housing, we got the full wetlands delineation and um, we are going in front of the conservation commission, I think tomorrow night <laughs> uh, to get it in. <laughs> but we're sending Berkshire design because I can't be there. Uh why does everything happen on the same night? Um, mm -hmm. And so they're going to begin the ANRAD application. The deal with the ANRAD is um, we're getting this certain level that allows it to be considered um, pertinent or uh, definitive for at least a couple more years than just a regular one because everything takes so long. <laughs> I just self-edited. Anyway, um, <laughs> as you all know in this room. So that's what's going on. We're we're really um we're moving on stuff. And then the other really cool thing is the complete neighborhoods grant bought us the services of VHB. Don't ask me what it stands for. And on Thursday night, we are having a public meeting with VHB in town hall. And they're going to present, um, I believe it's three scenarios, including the possibility of including St. James for senior housing on the campus. And so I hope everybody in this room will be there. Um, Tim, you have a question. Yeah, I just wanted to um, <clears throat> ask when we first remember when we did the uh, informational session early on in VHB's um, partnership with us, and they had um, an easel with a picture of the eight or seven point five acre campus. Um, it was sitting in between the church and the library. You remember we were all outside. Yeah. Okay. There was an image that they had that I've been trying to get because um, a resident of the, the Clark family that lives next to the library um, has been trying to get this from senior housing. And of course, it's a frustration with who do I get this from? I've asked 16 different people. So I would be interested in getting an image of just that campus portion, not anything that came about later and providing it to him through Cassie Sanderl, um, 
So, Tim, uh, Chris asked me about this yesterday, and I sent Chris the links to all the public repositories from senior housing, shared with VHB, and um, and I believe even CCI, because the, the conversations oh. happen in all these places. Um, it There's a number of different images so i don't specifically recall the vhb one but yeah Lily, I don't, Lily, i'm sorry Lily, i don't i don't know whether that's on there but you know it you is. can certainly get it if you if you um email luke or jenny i'm sure that they can send that to you that image i emailed luke and jenny but jenny sent back something that's that's more expansive it's newer it's more recent and oh, okay. trying to provide you know what was asked for um, so I can reach out to them again tomorrow, um, and see so if what, they what, do you know, what, what it was exactly. white and blue and you can see it. I yeah. think the recorder had a picture of Denise possibly standing in front of it or beside oh, it. Oh, was that the thing that we had at the library? You mean? Yes. yes. That's what, yeah. yeah. When we were standing outside the library, um, yeah, I don't know if we were ringing, ringing yeah. bells, were we ringing bells yeah. the same? Yeah, they they should still have that, Lily. Right. So, but the I guess what I'm trying to find out is what question is the neighbor asking? Because we it might may become to... moot because tomorrow we're going to have a meeting, right? And then um, you can provide him whatever you want. Since we don't own the other parcel, I was going to provide him information about what he asked for. I think he's interested in the St. James Church property because. He has a small parcel between the library and that property and might be concerned about what the town is going to do. Understandably. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, but I just yeah, didn't want him to. If there was a way that we could address, if we knew what their exact concern or interest was, there is there a way we can address it um, with something right. else? I think they might potentially want to buy the land. So just you know, compete against the town to buy the land. Well, good luck with that. Yeah. Preserve the building anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, There's that's... a lot of work that needs to be done on both of those pieces of property if yeah. if it's acquired by anybody other than to take it down. Um, the main house is in better shape than the church, but the church is not in great shape. All other contentions... And it's aside. filled with junk. Their junk. But Pam has her hand up. Oh, sorry. Pam? Um, yeah, thank you. Um, two things going back quite a ways. Um, I just want to say that I heard someone say something about the idea of if we could take Park Street, um, which I would be delighted to hear since I live on Grave Street and have been couple of times, as some of you heard, um, almost hit broadside by someone coming the wrong way down down Park Street when I've been trying to get out of, of Grave Street. So I, I love that idea. I hope they'll follow up on that. But the other thing um, about this neighbor and trying to get information, um, Chris Nolan was very helpful to me the other day. And I don't, you probably can't see this, but he printed something out for me no, I guess you can't. Well, anyway, he printed something out for me um, that was very helpful because it it includes like North North Main and and Conway Street and all of the properties in between, um, and it goes up to just beyond the St. James. Um, but I don't I don't see anything indicating that the the person between the library and St. James owns any other lot of land. It just so it shows one, but, yeah, yeah. but I wonder, uh, I mean, I think this sort of thing would in fact be very helpful. And I like the idea of getting the, the one that was used that we used at that um, information gathering outside session mm -hmm. Um, when the when the bells were being rung, um, and I, so I think I, I'd like to see some form of large 
um, map, plat, whatever plan um, at the meeting on on Thursday night, because I think that would be very helpful for folks. And that's they, it. I, they, they should have all of that. As a matter of fact, Lily, if you want, I'll just email Luke and Jenny and say, please, can you bring that along? I just, I, mean, I, I would be a little concerned that it, it might be confusing, but whatever. Yes, I think that would be a good idea. Well, this is this is the last meeting that they're doing, you know, with us. So, you know, that's that they have no reason to keep that. So they should just bring that along. Yeah. So, okay. So, All and, right. and to wrap up um, to that end, this is the final thing they're presenting. Right. They will be presenting three um, possible sites, but we are also um contracting with Berkshire Design slash through Austin Design to get another three different possibilities of siting so that we should have lots of ideas. And the contract for Berkshire Design was sent to Casey August 25th. I do not know with a request to have it signed. I don't know if the select board signs that or just Casey because this was for the monies that were approved um, at town meeting, does any do either of you select type people have an answer for me? What was the question? How much it was? It was it was specific. It was specified in the town meeting article um, for like I think it we specified like eighty something, and this particular part of the contract is for seventy one thousand. Um, and, um, that was all specified. We already did the CIPC for that last year specifically. And, um, it's the actual contract and I sent it to Casey and the committee reviewed it. And, um, we're asking what, to have it what was the, what was the contract again for, I mean, what, who was it to? It was Berkshire Design. It's um, a bunch of stuff going along with the site feasibility for senior housing, and it's. I don't believe that's been signed. I I don't recall it unless it was signed at a meeting I was not at. But I would check in with Casey uh, when she gets back and. Uh, okay, so is is that something that she can sign, or does it have to go to you all? Typically, typically, a select board signs anything over twenty five thousand. Okay. Usually. Okay. And you could ask Chris Knoll in the intro. Yeah. Yeah, he would know. Yeah, he might. we don't have to wait till Casey gets back to f figure out whether anything's happened. I think yeah. it has to be on your agenda is what it sounds like, right? Yeah, and he could, he could pop it on agenda for sure. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. And can you do a screen share, Lily? It's disabled. Oh, you want me to enable your screen share? Enable, yeah. Thank you. Done. I just want to quickly share this for, um, this is what Jen sent me from Luke's office. And it has this big chunk in here as if it's a done deal. And I'm not really sure that's, it's going to be presented tomorrow night. So that's fine. Um, but what we had before didn't have E as part of it. Does everybody right. see this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So it's it's easier. I think what Pam may have seen was something I pulled off of the town tax site, which was white and yellow. And it just showed buildings and, and the uh, size of the relative size of tracks. Yeah, this is much better. The only thing that this type of thing, yours or the one that I have, does not show is what what this would look like if the library edition was completed they're they're going to have that pam on thursday night okay what happened what what do you mean what happened uh suddenly everyone froze and i couldn't hear pam oh oh i'm sorry um tim tim all i said was that what you just showed, what you just did on your screen share is much better than what I have. Yep. However, neither of them show the library as we hope it's going to look like when the edition is completed. 
And I, I think it might be a good idea to have something from that. I did speak with um, uh, Candace, and she said they did not have anything like that. That 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 they're they're. Denise, can you not hear me either? No, I can hear you, but Candace should have that. We, you know, we've we've gone over that. I mean, she can easily ask the architect for that image because that does exist. I'm just saying she she told me she didn't have it at the time I went in there. She may oh, have okay. meant she may have meant a picture of the right. new expand, uh, extension on the the campus plan. That's right. Yes, that's that's exactly it, and that's. That's what I just think would be useful to have at the meeting on Thursday. Well, yeah. They they will have that. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Jim has got his hand up. Yeah, um, I'm a little nervous about getting ahead of ourselves by showing a, a plan with the track that we do not own as part of the town campus. I'm remembering how the whole um, situation with a property owner uh, getting paranoid about the town trying to acquire property that has led to a whole bunch of massive legal expenses got started because it felt like the town was getting ahead of itself. I'm afraid this is the sort of thing that results in, you know, pushback at town meetings and lawsuits. Well, Jim, this is, we are in conversation with the property owner right. ahead but, of time. And we spoke, we've spoken with her. So I just feel like, I'm not worried about that property owner. I'm worried about the a butter because this is the we're sort not of we're not planning on taking the, yeah, but we're not planning on taking their property or anything like that. Right. The trouble is, there's a lot of very suspicious people in this town. That's true. <laughs> Jim, no matter what we do, people are going to say what they're going to say. Right, but I just feel like displaying <laughs> something with property that you know, showing that as as, as someone said as a done deal. Well, like no, it, no, no. It's a, it's a potential paper over it or something on the display at the live at the meeting. So what? So what we're trying to do in this meeting tomorrow night, and this is a really good point, and I'm glad you bring it up, Jim. Is and we actually talked about this in our meetings that what we're trying to do is get people to understand that these are possibilities. That's yeah. what we're talking about, and that's what we want is feedback on all the different possibilities. Nothing is a done deal, but you. Right. Yeah, that's a really good point, and we need to make that very strongly. Um, and I will make that point, and I'm sure that Luke will make that point when we open yeah. the meeting. But yeah, I also understand. I I would suggest that um, by putting this on there, and by us, by dint of us having discussions with the property owner about potentially buying property, but having no deal and no price, that it's probably not the best thing to do. But, you know, it's not like I'm trying to hide anything. It's just that, you know, we don't know if any of this is going to happen and if at what price. And um, so it's putting the cart before the horse in some ways. Well, we do have a price and it is. No, we don't have it. We don't have a negotiated deal. So we don't have a deal, you say 420, somebody else says 430. You say 440, somebody else says 450. You're setting the town up to negotiate against somebody, which I, I just don't know that that's a good thing to do. Depends but on how angry on, the person is. On the other hand, if we go forward with this public meeting at a presentation and we don't have that, and then we spring it on the town, then, then that or we've, less. We've, we've discussed it before. You know, we've discussed it before. We we actually had special, we had a regular town meeting we set aside money because we were anticipating buying the land. So it's not, I'm just saying that we're at, we're at a point now where we're, we're thinking about, you know, bringing it to the select board and the CPC and the CIPC. Um, you know, it's a little different than sort of speculative. We could do this. Um, we're, we're at a stage where we could potentially have negotiations about a pur purchase of a property. It's, it, it'll be touchy, but that's the way it is. <laughs> Whoa, Pam, do you have another question? Um, not another question, just a comment. Uh, and and it's, it's a good point to bring up about finances because um, 
one person did say to me, um, oh my God, you guys are thinking about, you know, how much is that, how much is that senior housing going to cost us? And, and we already have all these other things that we're going to have to pay for. And, and are my, how, how high are my taxes going to go? I'm just saying that, that we need to be prepared for, for some kind of pushback on a lot of these projects from people who feel like, um, they're, they're having difficulty paying their taxes now. And how, what is this going to do to them? It's just, just, a, just sort of a, a, a warning. And I'm sure a lot of you are, are really have more experience with that than I have, but it was shocking to me. Their, their reaction was, wait a minute, just stop spending so damn much money. You know, I can't afford to live in this town anymore. And I said, I said, actually said to this person, that's why we're trying to build senior housing, because we want to have places for people to live who may not be able to afford to keep their property anymore. At any rate, thank you. Okay. Thanks, Pam. All right. So if we're finished with that right now, I think I'll just wrap up by giving a couple of updates. Um, unfortunately, we did not get the T-Mobile grant for $50,000. So, you know, we'll just move on from there. Um, as far as the planning board, we just had a meeting last night. We had one participant and it was, it was just, um, it was, it was on chapter 179 and it was just sort of an information session. We actually had some good feedback from the one participant who did come. So that's, that's really good. Our next meeting, and that is going to be on October 2nd, and that's a public hearing for chapter 179. So we do encourage people to come to that and to have any questions. Uh, I think Amy was posting the PowerPoint from last night, or she will be, I think tomorrow, and also the red line, all the track changes on the entire 179. So if anyone feels like re a little light reading, you know, feel free to look at that. That will be on the website. But um, Lily? What does chapter 179 cover, please? They are zoning, by the uh, zoning bylaws. And specific to yeah, the planning board. We've made some some substance substantive changes and a lot of organizational changes so that you can see. But we'll map that out, you know, pretty clearly again on October 2nd, and then we'll be taking that to town meeting on October 23rd. And hopefully that will be supported. We are going to do it as three different warrants. So if for some reason one doesn't pass, the other two pass, we'll go back to square one on the one that doesn't pass, but we're hopeful that they'll all pass. So, so that's going on. Um, I think, I don't know, no one else mentioned that, but next amp is the planning board did do a, a site visit on the uh, uh, transfer station. And I don't know when that will happen. Maybe Tim knows or Trevor knows when next amp is going to start building the solar. I do not. Array. Okay. I just so, know that they've overcome some hurdles. Yeah. We know yeah. Good. I mean, yeah, there have been some hurdles. And of, of course, weather has been one of the big hurdles. <laughs> so, but hopefully, you know, that that's moving forward. Um, let's see. Okay. Yeah. The other question, I know we've talked about this multiple times. I think Casey was looking for looking at that, but in preparation, regardless of what happens with the 1821 building, we do need to clean clean things out and we can get a bunch of volunteers so they can sign a waiver we can go do it we just need to set up some dumpsters and a time i think casey looked at that but i don't know maybe someone needs to help her out on that end and then um you know i'm certainly willing to go put on my gloves and mask and get all the junk out of there so once we secure that then we'll let everyone know you know not everyone but interested parties know about cleaning that out and I think that's about all I have. So I don't know if, oh, Julie. Any news on hiring the planning, the planner? Yeah, so um, we had conducted interviews. Denise was part of it and, and myself, uh, Casey, Chris Nolan, and um, who was our fifth person? Brenda. 
Brenda. Brenda. Sorry. Yeah. And um, we identified two very good, highly qualified candidates, one of whom uh, yeah. decided after the initial interview to not move forward at this time. We've made an offer to another person um, and that's being worked on. We uh, The select board authorized Casey to conduct, you know, hiring negotiations and with an idea of hiring someone and that's in process at the moment. Anything to add, Trevor? No, that that's exactly it. Yep, very helpful. She was very smart, smart person. <laughs> and she lives in Deerfield. Yes. Hey. Uh, <laughs> and she's expressed an interest in helping move the town forward. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Nice. yeah. So pretty exciting. Let's hope it all works out. Yep. So, okay, great. Can I ask one more question that I think is very quick? Um, yeah. All those, the, the placard things with all the history pictures that are in town yeah. hall, those are really, really cool. Does anybody yeah. know who great. put those together? No. PBMA, I believe, right? PBMA? I, think PBMA. I believe it was. Yeah. Like, I would love to have a job. book with those in them. <laughs> so, I know. Yeah. They're wonderful. They're, you think it's yeah. PBMA that did it? Yeah. That's a great idea, Julie. Nice that, yeah, that is a good idea. Yeah. Loved it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if they have those images, you can just take them to, right. even take them to Copycat and they can they can put a book together. Yeah. So do that. Great yeah. Idea. That would be really cool. Well, it'd be nice just to to save them and put them, maybe place them in in um, the new town municipal building when yeah, that's finished. For sure. So definitely keep them keep them on hand. Okay, so if there's nothing else, oh, no wait, other. Wait. What? Denise, oh, Jim, I'm sorry, my God. Can you hear about the library? <laughs> yes, of course. Um, I was totally not actually at last week's meeting because I was at a meeting at a bigger library, but. Um, uh, I have the director's report here. So um, uh, you've already heard from the building committee, so I won't repeat that um, about the new cost estimate. Well, actually, I don't remember if this was said, the divine design development part of the project had a new cost estimate this month, which was about 500K over last estimate. So the architect has made a list of design items to remove that might be removed or added back and possibly added back later to try to squeeze into the budget. Um, she didn't have any of this. The, we've already discussed the temporary space and the congregational church is definitely mentioned as an option. Um, fundraising, um, Candace, Nancy, and Marjorie met with the CFOs at Deerfield Academy and Bement Schools. Uh, no um, report, no mention of them coughing up anything. Um, we're doing a fundraising event January, uh, uh, October 8th. I rounded up a bunch of local science fiction writers. Um, there's also a Halloween party at Quan Quan Farm on the 27th, and they're uh, doing a mass mailing to local businesses. So they're they're trying to get. Oh, and they did receive a donation, although I don't have an amount here, from Greenfield Savings Bank, and they're also rattling the tin at um, Greenfield Co-op Bank. So um, there is apparently still some. Okay, this is what I have about architect and project manager contracts um it says in early july dan said they are ready and i i meaning candace asked for a copy did not receive then found out they're still not ready though dan said they were a month ago the town paid the architect's bills even though there was not a contract update said contracts would be ready today uh 8 29 um that's a month ago so i or sorry two weeks ago so i don't know what the status of them is, um, whether they've been signed or not. Um, additional state funding, um, uh, the eight remaining libraries in this grant cycle will send letters to state legislators for additional funding in the capital budget update. Letters not sent as the motivation has gone down to, to money needed for flood damage. I think basically they realized it would not go anywhere, so they're not gonna bother. Um, there was some internal matters about library policies. Um, then this element building, the elevator will need to be decommissioned after we move out, I, which is a little odd because I mean, I thought that whole section of the building is going to be torn down. So yes, it's definitely going to be decommissioned. Um, 
otherwise it's all that that's the last that has relevance to other town departments tim a couple of quick additions um julie correct me if i'm wrong about remembering this but um the architect and the opm presented the uh, revised budget as a very positive because we have 10 percent overage and with the alternates, some of which they decided to just do away with um, some supplementary heating, infrared heating panels, because they said there really is limited chance you'll ever need them. And, um, and as the plan goes to final and gets ready to go out to RFP, the, the retained um, overage will shrink and some of these alternates will slide back in, assuming the costs don't go up. So they they thought we were in a very good space um, based on the budget that we presented at town meeting and how things are shaking out. And some some labor is a little more expensive, but materials seem to be stabilizing or going down a bit. So um, it was a positive um, discussion. And, uh, you know, I think that was it. Yeah, but my takeaway, both the architect and the OPM were very positive that this was not like, it's not going to be $500,000 more, that this was very manageable. It was within the, the sort of scope of what they expect at this stage. And that, um, that, that, that this was a, a very good estimate and that they, they felt it would come in um, within the, the dollar value that had been estimated. So, um, I was like, my first reaction was sort of panicky when they said that, but then there, um, the more we discussed it, the more I was satisfied that, that this was, um, decent news. Although the other thing that, that is out there that we haven't discussed in detail is that this estimate does not include the solar panels. Um, and so that is going to have to be figured out at some point, the funding for them. And one one expects that there are grants out there or whatever, some assistance, but it, it is not within that estimate yet. Hey, Julie, I thought that either Phil or Dan, they were going to check on that and hopefully get back to us on the next meeting. Didn't they say that? Someone, I forget which one. Well, Maybe. Yeah, um, my recollection is that um, that uh, Phil said that if you put the solar panels into the project, that it probably would drive the price up of the solar right. panels. And yeah. So one thing that the select board is talking about is to the police station HVAC system. We've talked about this. We haven't made any decisions, but instead of funding it with ARPA money, we take back the ARPA money and fund it through uh, a request for, uh, you know, uh, the reserve fund um, and take yeah. the ARPA money and use that to pay for the solar panels um, mm -hmm. and to do it directly with a with a solar installer so that we we could take advantage of their credits that are out there through a direct relationship. The, the solar installer can get the 26% federal credit and rebate it to the town and reduce the cost. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's one plan. Good idea. Um, and because <clears throat> I do really think it's short sighted not to get solar panels on that building. Yes. I don't think anybody intends not to get. Yeah, the no, solar exactly. Yeah. I just think that it's it's not in that estimate and we need to. Yeah. Yeah. What I meant was it. not to say that anybody doesn't want them, but that. Right. Spending twelve point three million and then just not putting one hundred thousand dollars worth of solar panels. Exactly. Around yeah. Because. Uh, we don't because we argue over it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, People yeah. Tim, don't. I think, I think, uh, I think, um, who said that? I think Phil said that he was taking some other things out because, you know, by taking them out, you could bid them out separately. You know, just like the solar panels, mm -hmm. because everyone keeps adding on their percentage. You know, to everything that's in there. So, yeah, exactly. no, I, I, I have every faith in both of them. I think they've been really good. Both Tim and um, Dan. So okay, all right. Are we all set now? Thanks, Jim. I I did forget about you, but <laughs> okay. All right. If there's no other business, any other business not reasonably anticipated, 
I, I make a motion to close the select board meeting. I'll second that motion. Okay. All those in favor? All right, All right. thank you. Okay, great. Hey, everybody. Make a motion to close CCI meeting. Second. Second. Okay, <laughs> everyone. All right. Well, hopefully we'll all see you to tomorrow night at Leary Lot and That's Thursday next, night. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was mute. We didn't need to set the next meeting. Oh, gosh. You're right, Layla. Good grief. Thank you. Um, and we did skip over the other agenda items, but that was the VHB and we talked about it, so that was good. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was, yeah. Um, let's see. So. When's the special town meeting? October 23rd. So we should probably meet before that. Yep. Well, I'm, this thing is losing my meetings. October 17th? Yeah. October How is that? 17th, yeah. October 17th. Okay, so that's a Tuesday. October 17th. I was just at, at 6 30. All right. Okay. On that note. Thank you. Good night, all.